Hey everybody, so this is an exciting day because you guys have been wanting to know how this project is going and I'm really excited to show you. So here we are in the new garden. Now this is the garden that I talked about how to plan way back in January and by that point I've been working on it quite a bit. And then we did another video on all the plants that are in here. Um, and it's all basically planted for this year. Now is it finished? Absolutely not. There are definitely areas where I'm going to work in other plants. Um, there are areas where I purposely left space for plants I either don't have yet or I want other plants to get a little bit more established before I bring in sort of more aggressive plants um, because that should help contain those plants a little bit. But generally speaking, after a couple of days of taking off of work and working full days on this and then a lot of other time in here, We've got this fully planted. So I'm gonna walk you through the new garden so you can see what it is. Um, there'll be more information, of course, on all of the plants that are in this garden um, on the blog post that I'll link to, as well as the other video we did where I showed you all the plants that were going in here. Um, one quick note for you is that what we did here in terms of mulch is got very, very lucky. Our neighbor has an enormous pile of leaves that he's been keeping since they moved here. Um, there's some grass clippings in there and there's some pine needles in there and basically it just turns itself into this great mulchy compost and he said we could take as much of that as we wanted so that's the mulch that everything is around everything um, except for the paths which we have used bark mulch for um, and that mulch actually came from the electric company came and cut down some trees near us and we asked them to leave us a load of wood chips and that's what the paths are made of at this point anyway. So, so let's stop talking about the garden and let's start looking at it. So we are at the part of the garden right now. This is essentially where the path starts. If you were coming from the house into this garden, this is how you would enter it right here off of the driveway. So, so this is the shady part of the garden. This area, um, particularly on this side of me, is in shade all except for maybe two or three hours at the end of the day. Um, this part over here, obviously the shade gradually, the sun actually gradually creeps in. So um, at the beginning of the path, I've got this planted mostly with the Hecnocloa. This is the Japanese forest grass. And then you move into um, over here, we've got some Heucherellas and those kind of, everything sort of crosses the path here so that that is continued over here. There's a lot of repetition here. And as I described in that video where I was talking about the plants, the whole idea here was to do mass plantings of plants, but have them sort of trickle into each other and flow very, um, very smoothly. So as we come around the corner here, we've got a bunch of astilbes. This is astilbe chinensis visions. And that continues behind me here where I've got, I think I planted a total of 50 of these. So there are a lot of them. They're just starting to bloom a bit now. I've got interspersed amongst those, we've got Hacklinocloa all gold. That I actually transplanted out of the circle garden, which was getting too sunny for that plant. So that worked out actually fabulously. And then interspersed through the rest of this is um, Carex flocka blue zinger. Now, a lot of people mention that they've planted this plant and that it's, they find it to be, I think aggressive might be even a nice word for it. Um, and actually, um, I just heard Roy Diblick talk about this plant a little bit. He used to recommend this plant. These days he says, you just need to know that you are gonna have to keep after it. So probably, you know, there's a good chance here that, that this could go beyond where I want it to. And I will just dig that up. I think this blue foliage is right for this area, plus it's deep shade. Um, and so it won't be as aggressive as it might've been otherwise. So we've got the service berry tree over here. Now this service berry was planted as a bare root, um, not this year, the year before, the year before this. So this will obviously eventually be, sort of become a cornerstone of the corner. Um, I did add in, I'm just going to point out a couple of the plants that I sort of added in that weren't in the original plan. These are three pulmonarias, which have this really kind of light white foliage, which is fabulous. So as we come around the corner here, over here, we've got um, a lot of this um, Japanese painted fern. This is crested surf. This is a new one. 
this year. And this will fill in and sort of mingle with the astilbe. There's a little bit of that blue zinger grass over here. And then I've left an area over here where some persicaria is going to go. Now persicaria can be, um, we just want to give persicaria, and the one I'm growing is golden arrow, which has a really chartreuse foliage. Um, and it's not super, super aggressive, but all persicarias, um, they do want to move a bit. So um, my plan for that is I'm just going to give this its own area and I'm going to cross the creek and put some over there as well. So as we come back around the corner, um, more of this Heucarella, this is Red Rover, Geranium Macorrhizum. Um, I've got uh, just two of the Thalictrum Ellens here. Um, I'm really into Thalictrums, I love them. I wish I could have, if I could have gotten more of those, I would have, these, now these could get like, like eight feet tall, um, which will be a nice screen from the driveway because right now everything's very short, but mo many of the plantings here are quite tall. So there will be a lot of, um, there will be a lot of screening from the road and from the driveway and this should become almost hidden along this path. I've used um, uh, ladies mantle, El Camilla mollus, quite extensively here. You guys know that's one of my go-to plants and that does perfectly in this area where it's kind of shady and kind of sunny. And then as we come around this corner, because we're now bending around to the um, bridge here, I filled in for this year, I filled in with quite a bit of bronze fennel. I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen there long term, but this, I have to be very careful about what goes against the driveway here because there is going to be a lot of snow load on here. So that's going to be kind of um, something that we just have to keep an eye on. Not every plant will appreciate that. I also have in here some pignanthemum. Um, this is um, Pignathema muticum. This is uh, smooth mountain mint. So we're just going to come around the corner here um, to the creek and I will just quickly point out that we've got um, along here we've got 35 or so cat's pajamas nepetas planted here and um, some melina transparent over there and I filled in some of this area um, right here with just some Nicotiana. Um, left over to fill in that should get nice and tall for this year a little bit more ladies mantle So I just want to pause for a second and point out this plant which is starting to fade This is starship deep rose lobelia. This is a proven winners plant. Uh, it is such a stunner I will absolutely get more of this uh, It is just unbelievable and it's planted a nice moist spot here right along the creek So now we're crossing Crossing over the big wide bridge that we have here, which is really, um, really quite nice to have this really wide bridge here built by Mr. Much More Patient, which was um, awfully handy. And this part over here too, again, everything on this side is generally sunnier and everything on this side is generally shadier. Obviously the sun doesn't stop exactly at the path, but so we've got a lot of sun lovers over here and we're doing this at a time of day before the sun starts baking in here. So, um, when you see that it's shady, just know it's not really shady. Um, and also this corner hit gets a lot of sun too. So I have put in here a lot of um, Liatris. I've put in a little bit of Nepeta in here. There is, there is some Angelica here from that was seeded. Self, it's, a, it's a prolific self-seeder, you guys. So I pulled that up from other parts of the garden. So I have filled that in over here. I had a lot of Liatris. So there is a lot of Liatris in this garden right now. Whether it stays that way long-term or not, I don't know. But um, I did, again, we're going for height here and that was important. So as we walk up this path, oh, I'll just pause quickly here and show you this. This right here, is this is the tool of the day over here. So of course, weeds are gonna be an issue with this kind of spacing. Um, I, I did space plants out um, more or less according to um, mature size, which is farther spaced apart than I might normally do. Um, but this is a long-term planting here and I didn't wanna to have to come in and start you know, in three years have to start really moving a lot around. So the weeds are going to be an issue, no doubt about it. So what I've been doing is coming in here every few days with the hoe and just trying to get them when they're nice and small, hoeing everything, leaving the weeds when they're small. I just leave them lay where they are. Um, this is everyone, I think hoes are a really personal 
choices. Everyone has a hoe they really like. This is the one I like. This is um, Sneebor's Royal Dutch hoe. Um, but you know, I think a hoe is a hoe. So you find one you like and then that's what you use. So this hangs out in this garden a lot because I spend a lot of time over here just kind of trying to hit the small weeds. So as we come off the path here, let me just quickly address this, the sunny side of the street here. Um, through here we've got um, a lot of um, Calamintha Montrose White, which is one of my very favorite uh, plants. It is a pollinator magnet. It gets um, big, frothy, light blue, light pink, white flowers on it. Um, and there's a lot of this. There's more at the end of this path as well. I've got um, a little bit of um, serendipity allium here. I would like to add some more in some more of these alliums, um, either serendipity or millennium or summer beauty. I'd like to add some more into this uh, in the future. So worked in throughout this whole planting here on this side, the main grass that I've used, because remember this is all grasses intermingled here. This is um, prairie drop seed. This one is Tara. So that is what is worked in most of over here on this side, on the sunny side. So that will get, um, that's really a nice air, uh, airy, um, sort of feathery. I, I mean, it's not airy, but it's, it's loose. It's a loose grass. It stays, Tara stays a little bit lower than the species on that. More Liatris in here, of course. Again, we're working through this whole grassy border. When we get to this end, now here, this is a, a big blue stem. This is Blackhawks. This will get quite big. And again, um, this is all going to be a tall planting when we're done. So it is going to feel very much like you are in the garden when you're walking down this path. I also have here quite a few salvias. I use Caradonna. I think Caradonna, I like Caradonna a lot. It stays quite tall. It doesn't tend to split. I just like this taller form. I think Caradonna is kind of a classic. There are so many great salvias out there, you guys, um, that it's hard to choose, honestly. As we come up here, um, I've got a whole bunch of Echinacea pallida planted here. Interesting fact, I have Echinacea pallida. I also have some over here, and I also have some in the sunnier part. So I've got three different Echinacea pallidas here. I mean, they're all the same, but they were all started in a different way. I've got ones that I started inside in the winter from seed. That's these. They are doing the best by far. I've got others that I winter sowed into milk jugs and planted in the garden, and that's these over here, and they are much smaller, um, quite far behind. And then I've got some over there that I'll show you that are kind of halfway between the middle wood that I actually purchased in two inch plug size plants. Uh, so here's what I would say about this. Knowing how easy it was to grow Echinacea pallida from seed, I don't know I would ever buy it again. It worked great. These are really healthy plants. I started them in winter and uh, they seem great. So that's just my comment on that. And then to end this part of the path over here, this is more Calamintha Montrose white. So this will create a nice big airy white fluffy thing that crosses the path as well as the Echinacea pallida on this side. This is a standing ovation, little blue stem. I'm pushing it with this cluster of grasses right here. It's it gets a big shot of sun, but it's a little bit later in the day by the time it gets that. So we're just going to watch those and see how those do over time. Um, I also have um, just over here, I'm just going to walk into this garden so you can kind of see this better. So this is strictly shade here. We've got an oak tree here. We've got a big spruce over here. So this is a very shady area. So the main thing I have growing here is Carex Pennsylvanica. I actually um, planted 74 of these, you know, 64, 64 of these. I could have used double that. Um, so next year I will add more of this. Um, this will create a beautiful carpet that will prohibit weed growth and just grow beautifully underneath here. I've got a few hostas interspersed through here. Now you might remember that I said I wasn't going to put hostas in this garden because of the deer. Uh, and then I changed my mind because I really wanted that bold leaf contrasting with the Carex Pennsylvanica. I think it's such a good look. Um, so I do have to keep an eye on the deer out here. Almost all of the plants that I base, I think all of the plants except for these hostas that I've planted in this garden are deer resistant. 
However, I never trust deer in the beginning because they will taste test anything new. So I've been spraying this entire garden with deer repellent for the time being to make sure everything can get established before any silly deer comes along and tries to start nibbling on things. So I've got um, two small hydrangeas here. These are um, some new ones. This is Shadowland Diamond Lake. They're all blue hydrangeas, by the way. I wanted to stick with kind of solid blues. All this Carex Pennsylvanica over here is a big hosta that I think I might have called those a hydrangea, by the way. They're not, obviously not, they're hostas. Um, I moved this big hosta from somewhere else in the garden where I just didn't have room for it anymore. Just quickly over here, um, I also moved this one, but you can see, I'll zoom in on that for you, you can see that it got completely mohawked by the deer. So, so much for uh, I missed my deer repellent timing on that one. Just one, one quick note, I'm just gonna tuck around this tree here to show you this plant over here. This is Aurelia Sun King. I'm pretty sure this is the perennial plant of the year. I love this plant. I grow it in, I have two other ones in the garden already, and I have planted around that some more of that blue zinger. So we're gonna get that nice blue and chartreuse foliage contrast over here. And then down here, um, we're gonna put some more persicaria. Now, the crick is looking a little bit wild down there. I'm sort of waiting for an opportunity to be able to walk through the crick when it dries up a little bit to clear some of that out. Um, to be honest with you, I had sort of planned on planting literally down to the crick's edge and it became abundantly clear to me that I didn't have enough plants and enough time and enough energy this year to do that. So that's sort of an ongoing project, but we'll just keep that clear for now and then we'll plant that in successive years. So this is the shady part of the border. Now we're gonna bend around the corner so I can show you the rest. Quick note, I also have more of the ferns and some additional heucheras over here uh, on the edges of the path for a little interest along the path. And then over here, this big guy, this is my comfrey. Now I used to have comfrey planted outside our old vegetable garden and I moved it um, over here. And if you know anything about comfrey, you know that comfrey, comfrey kind of is where it is. So it still pops up over there. Um, but I would like, I love comfrey. I find it very useful in the garden. I use it to make fertilizer. I use it in the compost. Uh, the flowers are beautiful. So over here, I let the comfrey grow. And if this creates a little patch, I'm good with that. I do have some pignant, more pignanthemum muticum planted over here. Now I am gonna move in a couple more plants from the garden yet this year. I'm gonna bring some lamium in, go divide some lamium, bring that in perhaps on this edge and also some ligularia and I'll do that along the crick's edge. So now we're gonna bend around and we're gonna circle back um, over the road basically. So an interesting thing happened when I planted this area. Shortly thereafter, we had um, a big rain and this little gully sort of was created. Um, it's kind of full of weeds right now, as you can tell. So I'm not gonna fight water. I mean, you can't fight water. Water always wins. So I'm gonna just line this little, um, this little area here, outflow, with rocks. And it'll just be a little dry creek bed. And when the water comes down through the road down there, it'll just make its way through there without taking out anything. However, on either side of this, I have planted um, butterfly weed, Asclepis tuberosa. They are very small plants, um, so it'll take a while. And also, um, uh, this is blue grama grass. This one is, is actually um, honeycomb which is sort of, a, I think, a sport of honey blonde. So those are planted through here. It will take a while for these to get established. Um, the, uh, the blue grama grass was literally plugs, like, you know, maybe an inch and a half in diameter. So um, it will take a while for that to grow in. All right, now let's walk across the road here. So now we're in this sunny part. This bends right along the road and this is sort of what leads into our driveway here. I did leave a little strip of grass here. Um, that's gonna help too with just um, snow, snow issues basically. Um, so in here we've got uh, more Echinacea pallida and more of that blue, um, blue grama grass through here. Sorry about the lawnmower, guys. Um, then we move into Betany. This is Statues. And this one is Summer Crush. I had a hard time choosing one of these. This one is kind of 
almost light cotton candy, cotton candy like pink, which actually looks really quite nice here. It's a nice little pop of color. There's not a lot blooming here yet, obviously, because these are all new plantings. So it looks nice here, and these will bulk up nicely. In here, more standing ovation grass. And again, so there's blue grama grass through there, and then we come into an area where we're interspersing everything with more of the prairie drop seed grass. And through here, we've got, this is, um, okay, I'm gonna have to put the name up on the screen for you guys, um, Veronicastrum virginicum, but I forget the cultivar of that one. It should get a uh, queen of diamonds, actually. That's what it is, queen of diamonds. This will get tall with big, long, pink spikes on it. Um, of course, more plant grass interspersed in there. And then we come to Penstemon Blackbeard, which is blooming nicely here. Dark purple foliage as a good contrast. And all of this is kind of interspersed throughout here. And so then you walk back here and you're right back to more or less, even with the bridge. And the only thing I didn't talk about over here, because all of this is more of the Nepeta that I mentioned before, uh, this is a, a um, blue shag pine here. This will get pretty big, so at some point this will also become a block from the um, between the path and the road and the driveway. Okay, so you guys, that is all 800 or so plants that I put in here. Honestly, I could have used a lot more. Um, I planted every single plant in this garden with a trowel or a shovel. So, um, but I'll tell you, I love planting plants. I enjoyed every bit of it. So although it was a ton of work, it was really quite enjoyable. Um, and, I, and I'm glad I did it. And obviously I'm thrilled with the outcome so far. Uh, there's a long way for this garden to go. Of, of any garden I've ever planted, this one will take the longest to look the way I'm imagining it will look. It will certainly be all of three years for this to sort of come into its own and probably longer as things sort of ebb and flow and change. But I hope you enjoyed seeing this and um, thanks so much for coming along on this journey with me. You know I'll update you on how everything's going here and uh, where it goes from here. So thanks for watching and I hope you're doing something great in your garden today.